Spider-Man 2. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. In this video we are going to be reviewing Spider-Man 2 which is the second film in Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man trilogy and is often hailed as the best superhero movie ever created and for good reason as it really does make its lead character Peter Parker have to make some excruciatingly difficult decisions. It really looks at the duality of Peter Parker and Spider-Man like never before and like with the first movie it really builds up its lead villain in equal measure so you can really understand and sympathise and empathise with both of these characters which is just absolutely awesome and on top of all of that it's got some killer visual sequences in this movie which is just absolutely outstanding and also there are some true horror moments in this movie as well which really does put a chill down your spine and they're just such awesome sequences and it's amazing that they've integrated this into a Spider-Man movie and you really do identify with the Peter Parker character like never before as well which really does make this movie absolutely incredible and I'm going to be breaking it all down for you in this movie review. <laughs> So we open up Spider-Man 2 to see that Peter Parker is really struggling in terms of balancing his academic, employment, financial, friendship and love life and his brain is blaming his Spider-Man persona for the reason for why he is having all of these struggles and is then in turn blocking his abilities for accessing his spider-like powers which I just think is really really interesting and is really fascinating in terms of now you can see the struggles with not only the Peter Parker aspect of his life but also the Spider-Man aspect of his life as well. And this comes to such a blow that the Peter Parker character ultimately decides to give up the mantle of Spider-Man, which is tapping into the famous comic book arc, Spider-Man No More. And I just find this psychological journey for the lead character just absolutely brilliant. But they don't solely focus on Spider-Man because from a cinematic spectacle point of view, you still have those brilliant Spider-Man sequences in this movie, unlike with Batman The Dark Knight Rises, which was fully focused on the Bruce Wayne character and sacrificed a lot of Batman scenes on the big screen. Whereas this movie, I feel like it balances the two super, super well, which just makes the lead storyline for the lead character absolutely brilliant. We then have the main villain in this movie, Otto Octavius. And very similarly to what they did with Norman Osborn in the first movie, they really build up this character so that you can really see the transition from the scientist, Otto Octavius, into the supervillain, Dr. Octopus. And I think it's really, really interesting how with Norman Osborn, the enhancer in his blood really brought out his evil side and really made him ultimately go down the dark path. Whereas with Otto Octavius, it's the tentacles and the AI robots that are taking over control. I think it's also really interesting how they also do this in the third movie with the Eddie Brock character where the symbiote is taking over the Venom character. So I think it's really interesting how they do that with the three lead villains. I do think Norman Osborn's arc is still the best one in terms of him losing everything from a business point of view which really brought out his desire to want to go down the dark path. Now I do think with Otto Octavius I feel like the ending of this movie was a little bit anticlimactic. I know the scientist Otto Octavius was able to regain control over the AI robots and felt the only way to stop any more bloodshed and more chaos happening is to ultimately sacrifice himself. And so I thought the arc was interesting. I just felt like they built up a really big confrontation taking place between Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. I know they do have one in the third act. I just felt like they could have pushed it a little bit more. But you know, that being said, ultimately the Otto Octavius character did sacrifice himself for the greater good. And on that point, I think this movie is really, really interesting as it really does examine the difficulty and the responsibility of heroism. And I think it's really interesting as well as it really does hark back to the Joker line in Batman The Dark Knight in terms of you can either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself becoming a villain, which I think is really true to the Otto Octavius character. And I think this movie is also really, really cool as there are just loads of lessons in this movie as well, such as really embracing the path that you're going to go down and recognizing that it's not easy as well, which I think they really nicely come back to in the third movie where everything really does inflate Peter's head, which I think is a really interesting path. But as far as the second movie goes, the storyline is absolutely brilliant. So one of the main reasons that this movie is so beloved is of course it has all of the brilliant visuals, but in particular, it's got such brilliant character arcs for all of the main players 
in this movie. You know, it is a superhero movie, but it really does focus on characters first, which just makes it super, super wicked. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, we of course have Tobey Maguire, who does such a good job in playing Spider-Man and Peter Parker from his Peter Parker persona. He is trying to please everyone. He is trying to keep all of his plates spinning. But unfortunately and ultimately, it all comes crashing down. And with his Spider-Man powers depleting as well, he ultimately decides that the Spider-Man persona is a thing that he's going to give up. His time as Peter Parker is then a little bit more straightforward. He's able to focus on things a little bit easier. I do like the fact that they were showing it wasn't completely smooth sailing. However, the crime rate is going up. And when he sees that Mary Jane's life is nearly going to be in danger, that's when he is able to really regain his power again and come back stronger than ever. I do like the fact that they were showing, like I said before, that it's not very easy or simplistic, but at least this time he is a much stronger, better version of himself. Next up, we have Alfred Molina, who is playing the Dr. Octopus and the Otto Octavius characters in this movie. And it's really interesting here as well as that first, he is Peter Parker's mentor, but then he completely changes into being a really evil supervillain. And he's not only very threatening and dangerous from a battle point of view, I mean, that scene in the clock tower and of course the train are incredibly iconic, but also he really does betray both Peter Parker and Spider-Man when he hands Spider-Man over to Harry Osborn, pretty much handing him over to his death. So he really does betray both of these aspects of this character. And like I said before, I do feel like it is somewhat unresolved. I know his arc was really, really great in terms of he ultimately then decided to sacrifice himself. But I just feel like there was just a little bit more that he could have given. With Norman Osborn, you know, his presence was definitely felt across the three movies. And I just felt like he did a little bit more than the Otto Octavius and the Doctor Octopus character. So I'm so glad that he's going to get a second chance in No Way Home, which I think is going to be absolutely brilliant. Next up, we have Kirsten Dunst, who is playing the Mary Jane Watson character. I feel like she's a lot better than she was in the first movie. And her arc also gets even better in the third movie. As far as this one is concerned, she is longing for Peter Parker and for Spider-Man, but because she gets rejected, she goes down a different route and goes out with John Jameson, who is J. Jonah Jameson's son. And so from a love interest point of view, although it was really interesting how they were showing, even though she's trying to move on from the Peter Parker character, she is still longing for him and ultimately does go back to him as well. Next up, we have James Franco, who I always thought was such a brilliant casting decision for the Harry Osborn character. And in this movie, you can really see that he's still burning with rage and revenge for what he thinks was the murder of his father by Spider-Man and how this is really putting a dagger in between his friendship with Peter Parker as he feels that Peter isn't being totally loyal to him. And of course, they do a little bit of a tease for his ultimate transformation into the new Green Goblin. And speaking of brilliant casting, we then have one of the best decisions ever made by Sam Raimi, which was to give J.K. Simmons the role of J. Jonah Jameson. And in this movie, he just continues to do such a brilliant job as that character. He is feeling a little bit sorry for the Spider-Man character, which I thought was really, really interesting for this character to completely go 180 when he saw that the crime rate is going up and Spider-Man is nowhere to be seen. So there is a really fascinating the push and pull relationship that these two characters share. And it's really funny in deleted scene footage where you see the J. Jonah Jameson character dressing up as Spider-Man when he has his outfit, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Next up, we have Rosemary Harris who is playing the Aunt May character. And I think it's really, really intriguing that she may well realize that actually Peter Parker is Spider-Man and how she was subtly influencing him to go back to that persona, which I think is really, really cool. And also it was really emotional when she was also giving Peter the burden of not knowing if she's going to forgive him for having an opportunity to prevent the death of the Uncle Ben character. Next up, we have Dylan Baker, who's in a bit of a supporting capacity in this role, but having a few appearances as the Dr. Kurt Connors character. Obviously, he was going to then become the Lizard in some future installments, which they then rebooted in The Amazing Spider-Man. Like I said before as well, there are a few appearances by William Defoe as the Norman Osborn character, as being a bit of a dark voice for Harry Osborn. And then finally, we have the Mr. Aziz character, who is the pizza boss for Peter in the beginning of this movie. And I just feel like that opening sequence at the start was absolutely hilarious with all of the pizza time quotes as well. And so from a casting character's point of view, Spider-Man 2 is pretty impressive. So whilst this movie undoubtedly has some awesome character moments, on top of that, they have some brilliant visual moments in her as well. Some of the sequences in this movie are truly iconic, which is why still to this day, 
people are referencing it as well. I mean, there have been quite a lot of superhero movies since then, and there are a couple of moments where it's really obvious and apparent that they are in front of a green screen. But you know, that being said, it still does hold up today. And there are some outstanding sequences in this movie. In particular, I really love the clock tower. I just feel like they use the tentacles of the Doctor Octopus character so well here. And especially having Aunt May being stuck and nearly losing her life, I just feel like that sequence was really, really intense. And I just feel like the battle between Spider-Man and Dr. Otto Octavius was really, really cool. Also, like I said before, the horror moment where the surgeons are trying to remove the tentacles and you really do get to see the robotic arms having a life of their own. And killing all of those surgeons in that hospital was truly shocking. And I just feel like that sequence was just absolutely mind-blowing. The first attempt of the fusion reactor, as well from a scientific point of view of Dr. Otto Octavius, trying to control the power of the sun. I feel like that looked really, really cool as well. And the bank heist as well, where you really do get to see the Dr. Octopus character doing his first crazy act. I thought it was really, really brilliant as well. And then of course, we have the unbelievable train sequence. There were a couple of shots cut from that and then you can see them in the extended version. And that really does make that sequence even better. I mean, trying to save the lives of some of the civilians that Dr. Octo Octavius is throwing out into the wild, stopping this speeding train. I mean, this whole movie is dedicated to that concept and that was included within the Spider-Man 2 movie. And also some of the passengers realize who is the person behind the mask and them keeping that secret. I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. And some of the people that were on the train were actually Tobey Maguire's real life brothers, which I thought was a really, really nice touch. And then of course we have the classic moments of the Spider-Man character swinging across New York City which never grows old and I feel like those moments of course look absolutely brilliant and then also on top of that you really do get to see the weight and the burden of everything crashing down on the Peter Parker character and how he's trying to hold everything together but it just gets too much for him and so from a visuals point of view I just feel like Spider-Man 2 is a really strong movie. <laughs> So from a comparison point of view, I do love all of the Spider-Man movies and the majority of all superhero movies that have been created. I do feel like Spider-Man 2 definitely is one of the best superhero movies out there. I mean, in terms of the first movie, I really loved how they really developed Norman Osborn and Peter Parker together and did such a good job with world building, which really allowed the second movie to really just supercharge everything, really have a character focused narrative and really have the cool spectacle visuals there as well in terms of villains i do prefer the norman osborne character to the otto octavius character but you know that being said this movie is really really strong so much better than what they did with venom in the third movie really forcing a very condensed storyline for that character eddie brock aspects were really really strong but i just feel like the venom aspects were just such a letdown and i feel like the first two movies were really really strong as they were able to build up a single villain really really well so you can really not only connect with the characters but it just means so much more when they are having a big confrontation with the Peter Parker and Spider-Man characters. I do love the new takes as well with the Amazing Spider-Man Universal characters and the MCU version of Spider-Man as well. They do take them in a very different direction. But you know, that being said, like I said before, Spider-Man 2 is probably still the best one out there also. I feel like this movie had no limitations as it could really use the source material and kind of play with its toys in however way they wanted to do. I feel like with the Amazing Spider-Man series and the MCU version, they didn't want to repeat everything that we've all seen before. And so I feel like this movie had so much freedom in doing what it wanted to do. And as a result, it's a very strong movie. <laughs> So overall, I absolutely loved Spider-Man 2. Even though it was made quite a few years ago, I feel like it still is able to hold up today. Such awesome moments from a storyline point of view, from a visuals point of view, and most importantly, from a character's point of view, which is why I feel like this movie really does connect with a lot of people as you can really empathize and understand where the Peter Parker character is coming from. Even though we're not Spider-Man ourselves, we can still relate to the fact of trying to balance everything and seemingly have your world come crashing down and trying to then rise up against that while still having more challenges and things not being as easy as they seem. I just feel like there's so many universal connections with this character. That being said, you know, I don't think it's a perfect movie, but I think it's very close to that. And so for all of those reasons, I have to give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.